So can, can e-mobility help solve the climate crisis within the next 10 years? Uh, I'll start with a Danish proverb, if I may. Uh, not in Danish. Um, prediction is very difficult, especially if it's about the future. Um, <laughs> so here goes. Uh, in terms of the first part of the question, um, I think that's pretty easy to answer from a vehicle perspective. Um, if we make some assumptions, let's make some assumptions, that the electricity used to charge an electric vehicle is from a sustainable source, then it's, it's pretty much obvious that from a climate perspective, uh, the transition to electrification can only be a good thing. Uh, as for whether it can occur in the next 10 years, um, already with the first two discussions we've had, there's a variety of opinions. And certainly that's the bigger challenge, the more interesting question to address. Um, stating the obvious, electric vehicles are of no benefit if nobody uses them. So adoption is the key. Ignoring the aforementioned advice from the Danes, uh, I'll make some predictions. In the next 10 years, I feel we can be sure of several things regarding electric vehicles. Uh, the technology will improve, the cost will fall, and the range will increase, um, securing mass adoption. And more and more people, once we've got over that, that, that obstacle, we'll get mass adoption. Um, some would argue, maybe not Colin, uh, some would argue that passenger car EVs are here. Uh, they are viable. They're certainly more viable than they have been to date, maybe not purchased in great volume as yet. And certainly range anxiety is perhaps a bit of a PR campaign to win yet. Um, for me, I would say that far less clear co are commercial vehicles. Um, the vehicles that are on offer today, purely electric, very limited range, incredibly limited payload capacity. So we're not offering a great deal of choice to these individuals. Uh, why do we want to offer that choice? Why do we want them to adopt? Well, based on EU figures, they contribute 27% of the, uh, the road-borne emissions. So this is not an area we can ignore. So how do we make a significant impact now and in the near future? I don't mean in 20 years' time. I mean we do something now. We're all very aware that urgency is the key. So it's here that I would argue, maybe contentiously, that I think hybrid still has a part to play. Um, in certainly in enabling something in the short term that will allow those people to do something viable. And by that, what do I mean? I, I mean range extenders. And yes, it may have an IC engine. Um, stay with me a moment. Um, studies that we've done at ProDrive, for example, on a light commercial vehicle operating in the city of London um, show that a range extender configuration will do the following savings. 1,500 tonnes of NOx, 425,000 tonnes of CO2. It'll save 15 million litres of fuel compared to a diesel. Okay, guys, those are big figures. That's a fleet of about 200 vehicles. Imagine if we applied that to the Royal Mail's fleet that was discussed yesterday of 48,000 vehicles. Um, so that's what I mean by hybrid can offer an alternative. Um, not the perfect scenario. Um, there are still admissions, but I think those savings are worth grabbing. Uh, hybrids are incredibly complex to deliver. Um, they have lots of everything in there. They've got an engine, they've got an EV drivetrain, they've got batteries, they've got cooling systems. So that's where the obstacle exists. But from a technology perspective, all is not lost. Um, if we look at the increasing availability of power devices based on wide band gap materials, such as silicon, silicon carbide, sorry, um, that allows pro-driving companies like us, uh, Brewster and Yasser, I'm sure, um, to produce smaller, lighter, and more power-dense electric machines and power devices. Um, typically, they're also more temperature tolerant which means they can be combined with other things that are running hotter, minimising cooling loops and reducing complexity. Intelligent system integration as well. We don't have to invent all of this, guys. It's around us now. Um, it's about looking at the system as a whole. Perhaps adding stuff to save mass. I know that sounds contradictory, but it is true. Uh, and then intelligent use of engineering um, to deliver the integrated system. So I've got my marker that says, please get off the stage. Um, just very briefly, to illustrate the point, um, we have done design studies where we've designed a five-ton commercial vehicle with zero mass penalty that's a hybrid. No effect to its payload. That's key for uh, future adoption by commercial vehicle people. And then finally, just because Colin mentioned it, 
Um, what I will say is uh, one OEM is, is making great strides. Uh, you can indeed, by the end of this year, buy a hybrid for transit. It's a plug-in hybrid electric, it's not pure EV, but it does have 500 kilometres of range, and hence underlining the point that it's a viable, viable product for people to choose. Thank you very much.